Um, well, again, I'll go back to what I said before. If you have got to interview, it means that your CV has done a very good job for you because it is difficult, I think, in academia. Um, you know, we can leave for any significant amount of time and then trying to get back in again, um, especially with the emphasis on publications in a lot of cases. But if you've got to interview, then obviously you've shown something on your CV that they really are interested in you, they want to hire somebody, and so all you need to do then is to show a very confident and positive attitude to everything that you've done, um, because obviously you know they have selected you. So stay as positive as possible, and really make the most of those different experiences that you've had, and show how that will add a new dimension to the department. It may be that very factor that is what's got in there in the first place. Yeah, that's interesting. And how um, so? What about the people that haven't actually got the interview yet, Michelle? So, um, so I know that we're talking about you know interview success, but you know, well, how would they get the interview with all of that experience? What tips would you have? So, um, what do you think? I think if you're drawing on your um, past experience, which isn't within academia, and you're focusing on the application form, that is make sure when you're referencing to that, that it is related to the job that you're applying for. Um, we're very keen to employ people who have that uh, real world experience as I say because it helps with supporting students with employability skills, um, it helps with bringing real world learning into the curriculum and also it helps with links with industry for work placements and for research opportunities. So we see it as a, as a strength rather than as a weakness. It shows yeah. a more, a, quite a rounded individual. And, and you know all universities and, and roles, they're all commercial identities now, you know, ultimately everybody has to make money because everybody needs to eat and be paid and ultimately those commercial skills are going to be valued everywhere. Yeah. I, mean, I spent two and a half years just recruiting for public sector and charities when I worked for, um, for um, a very specific recruitment agency and my goodness people thought well if I don't have third sector experience or public sector experience then I, well actually no, they were really keen to get people from the private sector because they came with all of this, this commerce and this commercial awareness. So um, what about you, Paul? What do you think? What advice would you have to that, to that, to that person, Asia, who's just emailed us? Yeah, the, it's the same kind of advice I'd give to anybody who's also been out of academia for a period of time and coming back in. Okay. I mean, obviously, you've been away for a while. It depends on, again, the post that you're applying for. But if it's a re mostly for research focus, then it would be very helpful if you could demonstrate that actually you've looked at the relevant publications in your field during that time, or you're up to date in the, in the key kind of milestone publications that have been released during the period you've been away, um, or if you're new into academia, like this uh, person who's, who's asked the question, <coughs> again, it's nice to have to demonstrate to the interview panel that you've actually taken the time to look at the key publications and research in your field, so you're up to date in some way. Um, and if it's a teaching post, again, look at the kind of teaching um, styles, flip classroom, inquiry-based learning techniques, those kind of things. Again, so you're just on the pulse, really, of the kind of current technologies and current teaching styles. Mm. Uh, that's my advice, again, as I said, someone coming into the profession, but also someone who's been away for a period of time. Um, so in a sense, you're just demonstrating to the panel that you can hit the ground running. You haven't lost that time. You're actually up to speed. Uh, and you can then, you've got, a, again, your kind of career pathway, your research plan mapped out. Mm. What about you, Nadine? Anything to add on that? Well, I think we focused a lot on research and teaching. I think bear in mind that administration is a big part of the academic role now. So maybe think about how the experience that you've had might relate to administration. So yeah, doing things on time, um, the amount of time management, uh, be, being able to do report writing, mm. those kinds of things which also feed into the job in important ways. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say as well, if you're going into a sector, you're going into a new industry and you have been out of it for a while, um, so maybe you've been on maternity or maybe you've gone into a different, or maybe you went travelling, I mean, I don't know, maybe you took a break. But I think it's if you can at some point spend some energy and some time surrounding yourselves with experts, so experts within your specific field, whether that's following them on social media, taking an interest in them, maybe attending networking events, asking them if you could, you know, buy them a coffee and pick their brains, anything anything that shows, and do you know what, if you show a genuine interest in somebody, so maybe in some research that they're doing, it's very, very difficult when you show somebody that you are genuinely interested in them for them not to show and be genuinely interested in you back. It's very, very difficult. If that place is coming from a place of substance um, and it's a genuine place. So if you can... If you are coming back into academia and you can show, look, I've surrounded myself with these yeah. people. Yes, I might not be working in that 
that you know in that organization but I have gone out of my way to surround myself with these people because the best way to be better is to surround ourselves with people that are better than us so look I've done that um, and that's always something that I think would um, you're nodding there Paul is that something that you would agree with no absolutely so I was just saying um, absolutely so don't worry about that that kind of time you've been out I mean there's obviously a good reason why you've been out at that time but it's it's that you can demonstrate to the panel that you've gone out of your way to actually understand what's been happening in the time that you've missed us in effect so you've, you've surrounded yourself as you say with people either on social media here just that you're up to up to speed with what's going on in the latest in, in the field really yeah. um, that, that's important I think and and, and again I'm, I'm always surprised by the number of people who I interview come to, to the panel and are just not aware of the publications or the key research areas or or um, breakthroughs in that department that they're actually being interviewed in. So take the time to look at the uh, web pages or profiles on social media or whatever of the people who are likely to be on the panel so you can come and demonstrate knowledge of what the key research is or whatever the post is in that particular department. So take the time. It's Again, it all comes back down to prep and homework and convince convincing the panel that you actually are up to speed in that time that time away is perfectly acceptable um, just to make sure you do your homework in that way Sarah what do you advise to, to do you get people you know people that are returning from maternity and that kind of stuff that are wanting to get back do you get people wanting you to help them um, it's not a very common thing but I do know of these um, initiatives to help women in science and there are big movements um, afoot to really um, encourage uh, universities to um, you know um, adapt to the needs of women going on maternity leave and other aspects of bringing up family and so on and I think what Paul said is exactly the same for uh, a woman who's considering taking maternity leave during her academic career is to stay in touch, stay in the loop, keep on top of those publications and also there are even um, funds that you can apply for, for example the Daphne Jackson Trust uh, which can also um, you know, get you back into uh, the, the academic career. So, yeah, go on Twitter, go, uh, hashtag women in science, things like that, but hashtag a lot of things. You know, social media is a great way of keeping in touch with people these days. Okay.